thank you for the uh, kind introduction and the opportunity to present today at the Arthroscopy Association of North America 2019 uh, meeting. Uh, today we're going to talk about sports hernias and the core muscle uh, injuries. Here's a list of disclosures, none of which are relevant to today's talk. So a little background. So sports hernia really is a non-anatomic, non-diagnostic term attributed to many different causes of groin pain. It really is defined by any activity-related lower abdominal or proximal adductor pain that's related to sporting activity. And it can, be lead, it can lead to a source of disability. Uh, it's really this confluence of the, the lower rectus, proximal adductor that can lead to micro tears uh, from the shearing forces that are encountered during sporting activity. And these micro tears can then lead to full thickness tears and injury. Uh, so non-specific terms such as sportsman's hernia or sportsman's groin, athletic pubalgia, or even hockey groin have been used to describe core muscle injuries. And so when you, when you as a clinician or even a patient, uh, Googles some of these, these terms, things like hockey groin, this is what comes up. And really, in this particular instance, it's really a, a spear to the, to the groin of a hockey player. So it's clearly not discussing what we're talking about in the core muscle region. Uh, so, you know, back in 2014 at a, uh, the first world conference in groin pain uh, in athletes, there was a consensus uh, statement that was made uh, via a Delphi process. And what they did was they looked at four main regions where these injuries occur. Uh, and they sort of try to define what determines uh, where the injury is, is occurring. So in the, in, in the um, uh, adductor region, there had to be tenderness of palpation along the adductor, but also the tenderness with resistant adduction um, in the iliopsoas region, there had to be tenderness along the iliopsoas, but also pain with resisted hip flexion or uh, pain with resisted hip extension. As you can imagine, that's the function of the uh, hip flexion. And uh, the inguinal region uh, was determined by pain with tenderness in that region, pain with resisted hemi-crunch testing or doing a sit-up. Uh, but the key was there had to be a lack of an inguinal hernia, a true hernia, whether it be direct or indirect. And so this is a region where the core muscle uh, injuries kind of come into play. And the last region was the pubic related groin pain. Uh, and this was related to pain with tenderness along the pubic symphysis, but there was no real muscle to test in this region. It was just tenderness of palpation. So those, those are the big four. Um, <clears throat> now looking at the anatomy of this inguinal region, you have this pubic aponeurosis, which is really a confluence of the rectus abdominis, the conjoined tendon, which makes, which is made up of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis and the external oblique muscle. And combining this with the adductor origin, this is really this kind of pubic aponeurosis that is a, where a lot of pathology can occur in a very small amount of space. And to make matters even more confusing, the indirect and direct hernia can occur in this region as well. So that's why this has been a very difficult uh, region to diagnose uh, and treat. So look at the epidemiology of core muscle injuries. The majority of surgical uh, uh, sports hernias have been uh, done in the young athletic male population. And looking at the schematic on the right, you can see how the female anatomy with a wider set pelvis actually is protective because it reduces some of the adductor vector pull inferiorly, as opposed to the male vector pull, which is more of a, a straight uh, inferior uh, vector. And that male anatomy combined with things like this, where male, young male athletes ha are at a high risk uh, of positions, uh, this combination uh, leads them to have a higher uh, uh, prevalence of these core muscle injuries. So the pubic symphysis is then a fulcrum. That's what it is at the anterior pelvis. It attaches the rectus abdominis and the adductor longus, and there's a tug of war going on uh, in this region. And the adductor has a couple of other adductors that have this inferior vector pull, notably the pectineus and the gracilis. So it's a constant tug of war, and when one gives way, that's when injury occurs. This is shown on the gross anatomy schematic, uh, again, at that confluence of the adductor and the rectus. So, chief complaint, groin pain. Patient presents to the office. 
what's the one big thing you need to rule out? You need to rule out an inguinal hernia because if there's a true hernia present, that needs to be addressed and managed. If there's no hernia present, then you can move on to the standard line of questioning uh, for diagnosing groin pain. And I think the top two are important, the where and when. Um, I think that helps the clinician uh, determine the type of sporting activity and the position that the extremity was in during that injury. So it helps kind of hone in on, was it the adductor? Was it iliopsoas? Was it pubic related groin pain? So it kind of helps the, the clinician figure out if this truly was from the inguinal region. The physical exam is uniquely challenging. Uh, and so we'll go through the fact that the differential diagnosis uh, requires the clinician to palpate the patient. You have to look at these regions and put your hands on a certain specific landmarks to help determine what was the true muscle or tendon or uh, bony injury. Um, Osteoides pubis is in the differential as, as is inguinal hernias. Uh, you can't forget about the back. Uh, SI joint pathology can cause radiating pain. Uh, of course, radiculopathy uh, can also play a part. And the hip, um, the FAI uh, labral tears can occur uh, in, in, uh, at the same time as these sports um, uh, uh, hernias uh, and uh, simple osteoarthritis, whether it be mild, moderate, or severe, can mimic some of this groin pain uh, that we're seeing in, in the younger uh, athletic population. Now, it's important to, to note that FAI actually leads to decreased range of motion of the hip joint because of the bony impingement. This then leads to increased extra articular, meaning outside the hip joint pain, uh, notably within joints such as the osteitis, since, uh, joints such as the pubic symphysis or the SI joint posteriorly. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we can't forget about the abdomen, um, appendicitis, things of the GI uh, tract, they need to be ruled out as well. So looking at the imaging, uh, top left corner, uh, normal anatomy, bottom left corner of the two images, you can see osteitis pubis, a significant degeneration of the pubic symphysis, both on the x-ray, as well as inflammation on the axial MRI, with more inflammation noted on the right uh, uh, pubic symphysis than the left. Uh, the middle image, uh, middle set of images uh, shows a uh, cross the midline uh, rectus abdominis injury uh, bilaterally. Uh, you can see that on the coronal and the sagittal cuts. And then on the images on the right, you can see increasing severity of a adductor longus injury where there's inflammation uh, at the insertion point, there is uh, muscle edema, and then a full thickness retracted tear on the bottom right hand corner. Uh, when managing FAI, you need to treat uh, everything that's found. So performing a perfectly spherical thermoplasty, which we've previously published on from American Hip Institute is paramount to the treatment and diagnosis. Again, to decrease uh, the stress on extra articular or outside the hip joint structures. Looking inside the joint, um, whether it be an anatomic label repair or a circumferential label reconstruction, both of which we have published on, um, this needs to be addressed. Now, whether it's addressed at the same setting as a core muscle injury repair or in a staged fashion, um, it needs to be addressed. And that was shown by actually Dr. Larson's paper in 2011 out of arthroscopy that if patients that were treated with for both FAI and core muscle injuries, uh, either in concomitant fashion or stage fashion, had approximately 90% return to play rate versus those who were treated for one or the other. And those return to play rates were precipitously lower, around 30 and 50% respectively. So it matters to diagnose and treat all the pathology that's found. Management options, there's really uh, limited outcomes and limited and there's a lack of consensus because of the multiple uh, variations that have been described. Um, uh, this is really predicated on surgeon training. Um, open, mini open, laparoscopic, endoscopic techniques to repair these core muscles have been described, but again, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, um, there's really a lack of consensus as to who's best to treat. Uh, in my opinion, um, if you're trained and you understand the anatomy, uh, then uh, you have to, to understand what is done best in your hands. Um, but you need to be able to find and repair any type of injury. So uh, inguinal canal uh, 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 region within the uh, epineurosis of the external oblique, um, uh, repairing the inguinal ring, or even a true hernia repair needs to be in the armamentarium of the treating clinician. Um, decompression of the genitofemoral femoral or the ilioinguinal nerve uh, needs to be no hot you need to know how uh, needs to be known how to do, 
And also in our hands, the rectus abdominis repair with a partial adductor release of the longus tendon is, is fairly routine. Uh, but notably, if you find a retracted adductor uh, tendon injury, um, pre-op imaging and uh, physical exam, that needs to be part of your repair techniques. FAI correction as well as label repair and management is of the utmost importance as well as being able to perform a pubic symphysectomy. Uh, and in our hands, this is done in an endoscopic fashion as seen here with, with excellent results. So multiple publications on various techniques. Um, again, uh, whatever is the uh, most comfortable uh, management option for the uh, treating clinician, uh, this needs to be employed. Uh, but further studies need to be done to determine, uh, you know, uh, and streamline sort of management techniques and um, uh, treatment algorithms. So in conclusion, sports hernias is becoming increasingly recognized, yet uh, need more outcome studies. There's little consensus upon surgical management, but you need to be prepared for anything. Um, as we mentioned, uh, repairs of the canal, true hernia repairs, uh, diagnosis and management of FAI and labral tears, and even pubic symphysis issues need to be addressed. Uh, preparation is the key. Uh, thank you for your time.